In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at these current conditions, diving into the upcoming pattern. There is also some severe weather to go over as well. Let's just get straight into things though. As you can see, there's quite a bit of storminess going on around the nation, mostly here in the eastern half of the nation here. And then also we can see that there is a large storm here for the middle of the western United States here over states like California, Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and even Montana as well there. There is a couple of pockets of storminess in between. We will take a look at all of these though. Uh, first things first, let's just zoom in here to the western United States. We always start things out out here. Uh, we can see that for Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, down through California, Nevada, and back up through Utah, and then back into Wyoming. We do have just this area of storminess, the worst of which is happening here for the mountainous regions of California here. That is certainly where the worst of this is located. Outside of that and east of there, really, we see mostly scattered activity here with some scattered showers and thunderstorms potentially. We see here for northern California as well, there is some isolated activity happening in here also some of which does seem a little bit heavier, so that's going to be worth noting as well. As we work our way down to the four corner states here, like New Mexico, mostly just New Mexico actually, we see a bit of Texas involved here as well, we just see these isolated showers and thunderstorms around, mostly thunderstorms there for Texas, and mostly showers here for New Mexico it appears. Uh, we can also see that as we move towards Utah, uh, or Oklahoma into Texas here, we can see that near Oklahoma City we do see some thunderstorms developing here. Also near Dallas-Fort Worth we saw some of those earlier on. Those have now dissipated a little bit as time has moved on. We can also see for the Dakotas and portions of Minnesota here, we've seen some thunderstorms sparking up throughout the day today as well. Um, so from South Dakota up through North Dakota and even into Minnesota, we've seen a lot of that taking place. Then as we work our way down into the regions here that I would call the Ohio Valley into kind of the south, I guess, uh, Arkansas up through Tennessee, Kentucky into Ohio primarily, we do see quite a bit of very heavy showers and even thunderstorms spreading throughout this region. An area that really does not need any more precipitation, an area that has seen a lot of flooding, is now continuing to see heavier precipitation, unfortunately. We can see that for the deeper south here, we see these isolated and scattered about uh, tropical thunderstorms taking place all the way from Florida up through into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Texas there. These are indicative and, and really just known for having very sudden downpours and flash flooding events with them. So we're going to want to really watch for that activity. We can see that all the way up into the Carolinas on the eastern seaboard, we see a lot of this isolated activity off the southeast coast as well. So that's also worth noting. They're very, very similar to those ones we see for the Gulf. And then last but not least, we just have some showery and maybe isolated thunderstorm activity taking place here in the northeastern corner of the nation. Definitely some heavier showers at least there in the yellows, but uh, if not that, then maybe even potentially isolated thunderstorms. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to move right into that upcoming pattern as well as the upcoming severe weather. All right, now here we are taking a look at the upcoming pattern, and by the time we're reaching this afternoon, we're still going to have some storminess spread around the eastern United States here. As you can see, this is going to be in the form of showers and potential thunderstorms as well, so we'll be watching for these things throughout the eastern United States and also the central western United States still dealing with some of this storminess out there as well. By the time we reach tomorrow afternoon, we're going to see a little bit more widespread activity here in the eastern United States. So for a lot of different areas, we're going to be seeing that tomorrow. We can also see that this area that was impacting the central western United States has now kind of moved a little bit further north here uh, into kind of the northern Rockies in here and then also portions of the upper Midwest as well. And we still see some of that there for the four corner states also. But I guess the biggest thing going on is still this storminess in the eastern United States. By time we reach Sunday the 7th, we can see that there will still be some storminess here in the eastern United States as well, stretching down uh, through the four corner states and back up into the upper Midwest. So we're still going to have a lot of this storminess throughout the central and the eastern United States by the time we're reaching later this weekend. And by the time we're taking a look at Monday, August 8th, we can see plentif plentiful amounts of storminess here. Uh, anywhere east of the plains, really, we're seeing tons and tons of storminess here. Especially the darker areas are going to be a little bit more consistent and persistent with that storminess there. Uh, and then we have also the four corner states still dealing with some of this storminess back down around here. Now for Tuesday, August 9th, we can see that there will be quite a bit of storminess here throughout a lot of the southern United States and back up into the northeastern United States. So something like this, we're going to see plenty of storminess around for multiple different states. 
We can also see that by Wednesday, we're still dealing with a lot of this storminess here in a, primarily the, the southern United States here, even a bit still going on for the northwestern United States by that point as well. So very, very stormy pattern we're going to find ourselves in. And even by the time we reach Thursday, the 11th of August here, we're still dealing with a lot of this storminess in the southeast. A little bit of storminess spread around for the southwest and also the northwest, but primarily it's the southeast dealing with a lot of that storminess there. We can also see that the southeast by Friday afternoon, August 12th, is still only really dealing with the storminess. Everywhere else is pretty quiet. We do start to see a front potentially develop here by the time we're reaching August 13th. That'll be Saturday. Uh, we can see that there is some storminess spread across this region. We still have the storminess underneath here for the southeast, but we'll have to see if this front wants to develop here. And it really does quiet down here by Sunday. We can see where it's at, but it's just much, much more minor. So we do get into a quieter pattern as we're approaching Sunday, August 14th here. We can also see that the southeast is still dealing with this persistent storminess down there by August 14th, Sunday. So all 10 days, basically, they're dealing with pretty major storminess down there. Now, what we're going to do is take a look here at the total precipitation through the next 10 days. And as you can see, we have a lot going on for a lot of different regions. But if you're anywhere in the whites, we're taking a look at practically no precipitation. Your grays will be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Your reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns will be five to ten inches of precipitation, which will be our more significant areas there of storminess. Now for our third thing we're gonna take a look at here in just a moment is gonna be our upcoming temperature pattern. And we'll go day by day on that as well. Now here's the day one. Uh, temperatures and as you can see we have a lot of cooler air around for the west also for the southeast a little bit more neutral it's more of these in between areas and up north where we're seeing a lot of the above normal temperatures throughout the day today now by the time we reach tomorrow august 6th we can see again this warmth still just stretching from the south central all the way up to the northeast a lot of cooler temperatures out west compared to normal and also for underneath here uh, for a lot of regions there in the southeast, it's going to be more neutral than anything as far as the temperature pattern. We see that by the time we reach the 7th here, we see a lot of warmer temperatures stretching again throughout the plains here. So we're seeing these regions. A lot of neutral temperatures out to the southeast, so more, uh, you know, 1 or 2 degrees away from normal, which will feel near normal for the most part. And then for a lot of the west, we deal with mostly cooler temperatures. There is some pockets of warmth, though, like in the northwest and the southwest here. It's mostly in between where we see those cooler temperatures. Now for day three here, which will be Monday, August 8th, we can see some cooler temperatures here through a lot of these regions for the upper Midwest, down through the southwest as well. A lot of warmth here for the eastern United States still and the, and the northwest as well. So we're seeing quite a bit of warmth throughout multiple different regions there. Uh, Tuesday, August 9th here, we can see a lot of these neutral temperatures have reached into the eastern United States primarily. We see warmth here for the northeast and also for the northwest up there. Um, that's primarily where we're seeing those types of conditions. Wednesday the 10th, we can see this big area of warmth here over the northwestern United States. A lot of cooler temperatures underneath though. And even as you work your way further eastward, we see a lot of cooler temperatures towards the east as well. Now, as we take a look here at Thursday, August 11th, we can still see the cold is kind of horseshoeing around where we have at least near normal temperatures, if not above or below normal temperatures here for the south and the two coasts. It's mostly this in-between region here uh, where we're dealing with a lot of the warmth in there uh, for the north central United States. Now, Friday, August 12th, we see some cooler temperatures here for the southeast, which will be a nice relief from that heat. Primarily cooler here for the west outside of kind of the California coast there. And then again, the central United States still dealing with primarily those very, very warm temperatures there in the central United States. Now, Saturday, August 13th here, I think, yeah, 13th, we see warmer temperatures spread throughout the middle of the United States and even the middle of Canada. Wet, uh, cold just to the west of that. And then for the eastern United States, it's neutral to even below normal here. A little bit of warmth here for the west coast, but nothing compared to the central United States there. And then last but not least here, Sunday, August 14th, where we have some cooler temperatures for the southeast, also for the central United States regions. And then we have warmth here for the west and warmth here for kind of the south central up into the northeast. Look familiar? It's kind of the pattern that we started in in the first place. So we go full circle here. Very, very interesting stuff. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the upcoming severe weather. 
Now here's the day one categorical outlook, and as you can see, we're taking a look at two general thunderstorm risk areas there in the two lighter green regions. We also have three marginal risk areas there in the darker greens. That's where we're expecting isolated severe weather to occur. And then we have our yellow region there for the Dakotas in through Minnesota. And that's where we have a slight risk at severe weather there. This is for Friday, August 5th, today from the time I'm making this video. Now for day two here, which will be Saturday, August 6th, tomorrow from the time I'm making this video, we have two general thunderstorm risk areas again, uh, and that's where we're expecting general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We do have our darker green region there for the Dakotas in through Minnesota, Iowa, and into Wisconsin as well, and that's again where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then for day three, we just have a very large general thunderstorm risk area where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory. I will say, however, that usually when we see this on day three, we do eventually get a marginal risk in there somewhere by the time it's day one. So tune in with us daily. We'll take a look at this, and we'll see if we do eventually get an upgrade. But hey, maybe this will just end up being a, a general thunderstorm risk area. Only time we'll really be able to tell. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, just close out the video here. I don't know why I thought there was still something to talk about. So for today's confidence stab, we're at a four out of six. Uh, we're really just sticking here until any sort of tropical activity happens. It has been one of the biggest droughts I can remember for tropical activity in the heart of the season. So very, very interesting stuff. We're at a four out of six there. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our plot and patrons, Bill Crate, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lur the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also to thank our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Nimo Harley, Michael Kudalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Finn, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.